this video is on axillary lymph nodes so in this uh, we will look at the different groups of lymph nodes which are present in the axilla we will see their exact location and then the areas which are drained by these groups of lymph nodes and finally the clinical anatomy now there are approximately 20 to 30 uh, lymph nodes which are present in the axilla they can be little more also and the areas which are drained by these lymph nodes they include upper limb most of the memory gland and the subcutaneous areas from the anterolateral abdominal wall above the umbilicus also scapular region and thoracodorsal region till the iliac crest so these are the areas which will be drained by axillary group of lymph nodes let us see how many groups are there there are five groups of axillary lymph nodes and these are we can see in this picture this are the apical then we have the central here are the anterior or pectoral group posterior or subscapular group lateral or humeral group now uh, these lymph nodes the groups of lymph nodes they are named according to their location in the axilla that means the anterior group will be located in the anterior wall of the axilla and the posterior group close to the posterior wall of the axilla similarly the lateral group along the lateral wall of the axilla central group will be located in the fibro fatty tissue of the axilla at the base there and the apical they will be located at the apex of the uh, axilla let us exactly see to which vessels they are related or uh, to which veins they come in relation to so the anterior of the pectoral group they will be uh, lying along the lateral thoracic vessels right which will be located here just below the inferior border of pectoralis minor muscle so this is the anterior or pectoral group as the name suggests close to the pectoral region along which uh, vessels the lateral thoracic vessels right and below the inferior border of which muscle pectoralis minor muscle so one group is this anterior pectoral let's come to the second group that is the posterior or the subscapular group we can see here this is the posterior group this will be lying uh, along the subscapular vessels right and they will be placed just close to the lateral border of the scapula on the inferior border of the subscapularis muscle so this is the posterior group or the subscapular group right so it's easy to remember they will be associated with the subscapular vessels and then let us look at the lateral one so lateral one we can see here they will be present along the lateral wall of the axilla and they will be just medial to the axillary vein so this is where they will be located then the central group as i said earlier they will be located in the center or at the or at the sorry base of the axilla and in the fibro fatty tissue and finally we have the apical group so apical group they will be located at the apex of the axilla remember that cervical axillary canal so anteriorly you have the clavicle medially you have the first rib and posteriorly you have the upper border of scapula that's where the apex of the axilla lies right so they will be located there now let us look at uh, the areas which are drained by them so anterior and pectoral group of lymph nodes they are three to five in number and they are going to receive lymph from the lateral quadrants of the memory gland which is not shown here but uh, the memory gland is divided into four quadrants so the lateral quadrants from there the lymphatic drainage will go into the pectoral group and also they will be draining the anterolateral uh, abdominal wall right till the level of the umbilicus coming to posterior group or subscapular group they are 6 to 7 in number and as can be seen from this diagram they will receive the lymphatics from the back the scapular region the thoracodorsal region till the uh, iliac crest right so they will be draining into the posterior or subscapular lymph nodes lateral group of lymph nodes which areas will be drained by them they are approximately four to six in number and they are going to receive 
most of the limb from the upper limb except this area that is over the thumb and along the lateral aspect of the forearm right so from here actually this subcutaneous limb from this area that is thumb and the lateral aspect of the forearm sometimes arm also this actually passes along the cephalic vein these limb vessels from these areas they will pass along the cephalic vein and will directly drain into the apical group of lymph nodes so that's what we have to remember lateral group of lymph nodes they will be draining uh, the most of the upper limb right except which area lateral area right that is thumb and the lateral aspect of forearm sometimes including arm also and they will be accompanying which superficial vein that will be the cephalic vein so these will be the subcutaneous right lymph vessels and remember cephalic vein is present laterally basilic is present medially so the lateral aspect of thumb forearm and arm the lymph vessels from the subcutaneous tissue here they pass along uh, the cephalic vein and directly drain into apical group the central group which is located in the center uh, of the axilla that receive is going to receive uh, the uh, lymph node from the other groups of uh, axillary lymph nodes and these are from the anterior lateral and posterior groups so these three groups which we have already covered anterior posterior and lateral from here the lymphatic vessels they will reach the central group of lymph nodes then let us look at the apical one what what it drains this is going to receive the lymph from the central group of lymph nodes so once the central group has received from these upper uh, the other three mentioned groups of axillary lymph nodes then the efferents from the central group of lymph nodes they will reach where they will reach the apical group of lymph nodes besides that the lymphatics from upper limb that which accompanies the uh, cephalic vein right so as i said earlier the thumb region the lateral aspect of the forearm and arm the subcutaneous lymphatics from this, these regions they will be passing directly to the apical and some of the limb from the upper quadrants of the uh, memory gland will also drain into directly into the apical group of lymph nodes so now what happens after the uh, apical group of lymph nodes how the lymph is drained or reaches the venous uh, system so on the right side what happens is from the the efferents from the apical group of lymph nodes they are going to form a trunk which is known as right subclavian trunk we can see here right so this is the right subclavian trunk and this will join another lymphatic trunk coming from head neck region that is the right jugular trunk and they will be forming the right lymphatic duct so on the right side the lymphatics from the apical group of lymph nodes they will form the right subclavian trunk which will join the right brachiocephalic trunk right and this will uh, drain ultimately at the junction of the right internal jugular vein and right subclavian vein on the left side what happens is the left subclavian trunk that is going to drain into the thoracic duct and it is the thoracic duct which actually drains into uh, the junction of the left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein so is this clear so apical group of lymph nodes the efferents from there right the efferent lymphatic vessels from there they are going to form the subclavian trunk right so on the right side it will join the right lymphatic duct on the left side it will join the thoracic duct coming to applied anatomy let us see here so if the lymph nodes are enlarged we call this as axillary lymph adenopathy right so they could be enlarged because of maybe there is some infection in the areas which they are draining uh but the most common cause of enlargement of the axillary lymph nodes is metastasis of breast cancer right so that is the most common cause now in some cases uh if the cancer cells uh, they have spread to these lymph nodes so along with the uh, removal of the breast mastectomy these axillary group of lymph nodes also have to be removed during removal of axillary lymph nodes 
there is a risk of damage to the long thoracic nerve the long thoracic nerve which runs superficial to the serratus anterior right especially uh, we can see when uh, the person is dissecting out the anterior group of lymph nodes right so that times the long thoracic nerve is running very superficial and there are chances that it may get damaged right so this will lead to winging of scapula so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again